have developed an immersion system for your ASIC miners. So come take a look at me real quick. Now the first thing you might notice, we're in a ASIC mine. We run mostly S9s and L3s, but you can hear me. And we're filming this on a phone, so it's nice and quiet in here. Here, come take a look at the tank. So this is our flagship model. It's a 42 minor ASIC tank. Um, in here, you can see this is bit cool that we use to pump up through the miners, and then it exits the sides in a fluid recovery chamber. What you see here is what we call the secondary manifold, and these pipes actually go down into a plate that uh, separates the, the bottom channel from the top channel, and it then forces the fluid back up through the miners. Here we are back at the tank, and I moved one of the power supplies out of the way so we could get a better look at one of the miners. Focus. Okay, so here we are looking inside an S9. As you can see, there's a little bit of thermal banding going on over here uh, where the hotter fluid has expanded and just looks a little bit different than uh, the cooler fluid surrounding it. Now I'm looking down into the fluid recovery chamber where the fluid overflows the side of the tank down into the fluid recovery chamber and then it comes out the fluid recovery chamber and into the collector tank. And then when it comes out of the collector tank, it goes to the pump and out of the facility. Okay, now we are outside the facility and this is a dry cooler. So right here, you can see where the, the hot bit cool comes in and the cold bit cool comes out and they both go into the facility. Now a dry cooler, of this size at least, is made up of four fans and it's basically one large radiator all the way down. So you can see all the little fin fans right there. And then inside, you can actually see these little copper tubes right here that uh, they're, they're half inch and they go all the way throughout the unit back and forth, back and forth. Okay, now I'm back at my desk where I can show you the miner's hash rate, the frequency, and the power usage. Um, you can see most of these miners are running between 14 and a half and 15 para hashes at the 700 frequency. And you can see their temperatures stay roughly between 40 to 45 Celsius. If I look, look over here at the chips, you can see that there are no fans and they're all hashing at 700 uh, uh, megahertz for 15 para hashes or so. Uh, you can see the hardware errors are pretty low and the chip temps, etc. So let me, this is one that I actually pulled down. It's actually in a different tank. That's why there's 43 miners instead of 42, but this one has the amp meter connected to it. So this one's running at 750 uh, um, frequency and doing about 16 terahashes. So let me pull in the amp meter. And you can see that it's running at 5.8 amps for roughly 16 terahashes. So let me pull up my calculator. That is... 5.8 times 240, 1,392 watts, which is roughly the same as a Antminer S9 running at about 13 and a half terahashes on air. So that's a pretty good example of some of the efficiency gains you'll get from uh, running an immersion. Um, not to mention that if you had an Antminer cranked up to 750 frequency, it definitely would not be uh, 35 Celsius on the um, PCB and 49 and 50 on the actual chips themselves. So there you have it.